Paul Pierce and KG calling my man Richard Jefferson sweet. <laughs> now, when I first heard that, or I should say when I first read that, I was like, oh, my. They call him sweet. We going there? Like, we got that kind of beef? They going into the personal life, the sexual orientation, or that kind of? I was like, oh, because that's why I thought sweet men. But they meant it in a different way. They were just like, it was too easy. Basically, Paul Pierce was like, it was too easy playing against Richard Jefferson. Like, that dude was crumb cake. <laughs> I need these type of beefs in sports. Because if you know Richard Jefferson especially, I know him and, and Paul really well. I don't know KG that well, but I would love to because that dude just is gangster. I just love his gangsterism, right? Um, this is what we need, storylines. We need cats who were in the battle together and to be authentic. Like, yo, it ain't nothing sweet in here. And if it is sweet, we calling you out because you too sweet. And I guess that's what Paul Pierce meant by this, right? So you can see the video. And then um, it was some funny clapbacks in there, Paul Pierce being Paul Pierce. You know P.P., I, call, I saw him like a week ago or something at the gym, uh, leaving the gym. We were chopping it up for a sec. Um, <laughs> Paul, different dog. Like, I remember the first time I met Paul Pierce, it was at Inglewood High School. I must have been in the league or college. I don't know how much older I am than Paul, if anything. I don't know. I just remember everyone telling me I got to go watch this dude, Paul Pierce, at Inglewood High School. And I did. But I had some status to me, so I must have been in college or in the pros already. So anyway, I walk in there, and I'm looking. I'm like, damn, all right. I can see him, in, you know, in the warm-ups. But Paul got one of those, dis like, disguised bodies, right? Like, his game is disguised in his body. You can't tell. He ain't got the muscle tone. You know, he don't look like he's jumping out the gym and all that. Uh, it's a very deceptive game. Let's just say that about PP. And um, so I'm watching him. And I remember, all I remember is he was balling out of control real efficiently, kind of like a, a Luca, like a high school Luca. You see how Luca now doesn't waste a step and he just gets where he has to go and got that body that he could just body other cats. That's how Paul Pierce looked to me. And looked at the stat sheet at the end of the game, 20 points, 10 dunks. <laughs> Look at this dude out here clowning these kids. Uh, yeah, but here's the quotes from it. Uh, I think this is Richard Jefferson when he said, first, let me say this. Paul Pierce is one of the best players of the generation. 100% better than me, Jefferson said. I love when cats are just keeping it 100. I hate when cats, you ever ask somebody what's better, and they're like, uh, I don't know. I can't compare them. Everybody compares things, and everyone knows what's the winner. Even if it feels like a tie, like in track and field, ain't no ties, bro. Like, we're going to figure this thing out. Get out the photo. Get out the AccuTrack, whatever it may be, to the hundredth, to the thousandth. I don't care. Something is better than the other thing, and you can compare all things, right? He said, comparing me to him is like comparing him to Dwayne Wade. Whoa! Whoopsh, whoopsh, whoopsh. <laughs> it's different stratospheres. Damn, that's a snap. That is a backhanded compliment to the fullest, to the best degree. That's hilarious. We all know, remember, Paul Pierce was on ESPN with Michelle Beadle, my homie. Oh, man. And that dude said he was better than Dwayne Wade and – Jalen Rose, let him hear it. <laughs> let him have it. So that was a funny compliment. Timely. Like in the comedian world, comics would say, oh, that was very timely for you to bring that back up <laughs> in that moment. Oh, man. So it was back and forth between the two. They had tweets back and forth. War of words. And then finally, it kind of ended with uh, Richard Jefferson just gave him props. It was like, dog, you went crazy against us in the second half here and beat us in the fourth quarter here. Even though Richard Jefferson and his team, the Nets at the time, were smashing the Celtics, but Paul Pierce was winning the individual competitions, which this argument and conversation and beef was over. Love it. All right. So let's talk about that, man. Took me back. You know where it took me. Took me back to where it took y'all. That Richard Sherman crab tree, right? Like, God, they got so demonized, I guess, in that moment. At least Richard Sherman did. Almost crab tree became a sympathetic figure or something. Like, what? The same Crabtree, he's sympathetic now? Like, really? Y'all ever listen to Crabtree when he was playing? He ain't sympathetic at all, right? But Richard Sherman in this moment, why didn't we just accept what he was saying? Let that man speak. That dude was telling y'all how it sounds in the lion's den. Oh, it's so good. Trash talk. Like, what I like about trash talk is it's just going to bring more juice, more gas to the fire, right? Whatever the fire is. Because I think, I really believe, guys go out there and try their hardest. Now, trying your hardest doesn't always mean you were fully prepared. So you can be 100% in the moment, but if your preparation was 100%, eh, what you see in the moment, dog, that ain't going to be 100% because you ain't give 100% preparation. So without 100% preparation, 
Yeah, let's just say it's going to be 87% in terms of end result. So I'm like, look, if you ain't fully prepared, don't be talking about how hard you're going right now because we know there's a little off that fastball, right? But this trash talk kind of brought another layer of the conversation of can a lesser player trash talk a better player? I've always had this sociological conversation about that. My teammates, my boys, I'm like, yo, are we really into a place where you got to be on the same level to trash talk each other? I hope not, because if so, Dylan Brooks can't say nothing. <laughs> Let me stop. Um, but in seriousness, like, we all know Richard Jefferson ain't no damn Paul Pierce, and he admitted it. But does that exclude him from the trash talk conversation? Absolutely not. But it seems like it always seeps into there in somehow, some way, either in the fans' response or even like Richard Jefferson said, like, look, hands up. I am no better than Paul Pierce. Duh, we know he got me. And I'm like, damn. But does that matter? Because if that mattered fully, take it to the full extent, to the full extreme. That means that only Jordan and like LeBron could talk. Right? Like, you know I mean, everybody else, shut up, shut up. And that's wild and that's weird. I don't like that place. Uh, one, because it doesn't license me to talk about anybody. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, look at the DNs I could talk about. They're nameless. They're the DNs you don't know, right? So it's like, damn, I better be able to talk up because if not, who cares who I talk down to? It's crazy. But if you take that to the fullest, that's like Larry Bird couldn't say anything to Kareem during those Showtime Celtics series and wars. You imagine? Like, the Richard Jefferson of that is Larry Bird, <laughs> right? And the Paul Pierce of that is Kareem because he's the better player. You imagine Larry Bird not talking trash to Kareem? Man, Mr. Bird himself? I wouldn't want to see that world. I wouldn't want to live in that world. So it's crazy when it feels so weird, like, ah, uh, before Richard even get a shot off, you're already trying to stomp him out. Like, nah, dog, nobody want to hear that. Why? Man, that's Richard Jefferson. Nobody want to hear what Richard Jefferson got to say. Be careful what y'all ask for. Be careful what you wish for. You might get it. Some of the best trash talkers in this world are dudes that are less than. And why are they talking trash? Maybe partly insecure. Maybe partly they just want to talk themselves up. You know, fake it till you make it. I'm going to close this gap between you and I. And I can't do it physically because you're a better player. So let me do it verbally. Let me do it orally. Let me do it in other ways, right? Smart play if you're that player. But I just want more trash talk. I want more hell brought verbally. Because they taught us and coached us out of that. Don't give them bulletin board material. What the hell does that mean, coach? Don't give a damn what I say. All he can do is go 100%, and I ain't scared of his 100%. Ooh, I love to say that because I know I live that. Why do I care if I get you extra pumped up? Fool, you're supposed to come extra pumped up. And if you're not, that's on you. Shame on a homie who didn't come. <laughs> it ain't on me. Like, I'm supposed to be mad or scared to pump you all the way up. I pump you all the way up and still beat your head. Still beat your ass. That's why I love track. That was my favorite sport for one exclusive reason. No excuses. I know you were trying your hardest. I know you were running your fastest. And that ain't good enough. I don't want to hear about coach, bulletin board material, blah, 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 blah. Get your butt on, those li on that line in them blocks. Sit. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Simple as that. So I want y'all fans to be more receptive to these kind of conversations so we can get more of them from these players because y'all got them shook right now. Don't want to give them bulletin board material. Man, forget them fools. Say what you got to say and get it in.